Hello, I thought I would pop on and talk a little bit more about this Airtight palette since I'm um, putting in some new colors. And um, the reason I'm putting in some new colors is because I took it on my recent trip and uh, I have flown with it before, but here's the mistake I made, I think, and I wanna share it with you, is normally when I take it, I put it in the cabin with me and you know at the bottom of my bag and I keep it upright because even though it has this silicone uh, material here to seal each vessel it um, they do it will leak with enough tumbling and so forth well this time I don't know if I was just in a rush or forgot I put it in my suitcase luckily in a Ziploc bag because the whole thing turned to mud pretty much I think from the cabin pressure or the uh, pressure in the baggage compartment so you can travel with it but um, travel with it, uh, in, you know, keep it with you and then keep these little, you know, ridges. I probably need to take a brush and scrub out the paint here so that it can seal around here. And then also, you know, I do this every now and then because it makes sense, right? If the paint is all dried on, on the tops of these, um, grids, then it cannot get a good seal, right? Makes sense. So uh, just a few things I've learned in using it. Uh, but what I'm doing is I'm putting in some gouache, not acryl gouache, because remember acryl gouache is like acrylic paint and once it dries, it cannot be reconstituted with water. So I really like this palette for my regular gouache. I do I have used it for acro gouache, but you just have to be really careful that you don't, you know, put it away for a week and um, uh, let the paints dry out. Because even though it's airtight, they do, there is a little bit of air that gets in there and they, um, they will dry out. And then I've cleaned one, but you know, it's like cleaning acrylic paint. It's, it's tough because it's dried and it's um, more permanent. So easier to use with gouache or watercolor. And someone asked, well, do you put water? So I wanted to show you, I've squeezed some of these Winsor Newton um, and Holbein and a couple of Turners to get my favorite colors that I mix with. Um, I don't use these generally, you know, right out of here, but I, although I make a navy here by using indigo and black or any dark blue in black will be fine. So, you can see I've got a little bit of red that I just mucked up there. Um, I squeeze a little bit in there and then ideally you use distilled water. You don't have to, but what's what's nice about it is it's it's more pure and less likely to mold. You can get mold in these containers. Um, and the other thing you can do to prevent that if you find that's happening is a bit of hydrogen peroxide. Uh, and I'll just take a dropper, oops, I didn't get that one. I take a dropper of, this is called a pipette, and I think I have a link to this. Well, I, I know I have a link to the, to the palette and to, um, I think these pipettes, but they're on, they're on Amazon in my, uh, on my supplies tab of my website. So I'll show you how I put the hydrogen peroxide in. Um, I can't find it right now. So basically though, I just take a little bit of the hydrogen peroxide and put a few drops in each one and that will keep mold less likely to happen. I haven't had it happen yet when I do that. So once I add that, then I stir each one. You can stir them with a paint, an old paintbrush or a chopstick, um, really the back of a paintbrush. Um, I tend, the problem with stirring it with a brush is that you end up with a lot of paint on the brush, which you can then grab a sketchbook and, or a piece of uh, watercolor paper and clean your brush and have a nice background uh, made by cleaning your brush, or you can use the other end of the brush and it doesn't absorb as much paint for the stirring. <clears throat> and that also can be used actually rubbing on a piece of paper for some background texture. 
So uh, let's see if there's anything else I want to show you. Yeah, keeping it clean helps. The hydrogen peroxide, the distilled water. And then what's great is, so I'll just go ahead and stir some of these. This is the, I had already put in the black and the indigo to get my navy blue that I like to work with. And so what's nice is once you stir these and get them you know, to that nice consistency, they're ready to go. So you can pull out your sketchbook or a piece of paper, a pad of paper, watercolor paper, and start creating without, you know, having to get all the tubes out, squeeze them out, waste some paint. It just really simplifies. Oh, see, now that needs a little more water. And you will have to, like I said, you know, tend to these. So it's not like you can put it in the closet for, you know, a week, although I've done that. Um, but I would say a week is the most that you should go without looking at the paint, at least opening them up and seeing how they're doing. Do they need more water? Um, and they'll get kind of mm, like they'll settle a little bit and not, uh, you know, they'll not, they won't look all pretty like this when they're first stirred up because, you know, they settle like anything. So here's one where I have not put in a color. Let's see what color do I want. To, I think I've got all my main ones here. I could put a Windsor green if this is a dark. Yeah, I put a dark green there. It's a good dark to blend with things. I do it just like that. Squeeze a little bit in there. A little bit of water. As far as the ratio of water to paint, it really depends on... I make these a little more wet because I don't want them drying out, right? So. Um, I would say maybe I'm getting a ratio, a, a, a feel of like a heavy cream, a really heavy cream, probably thicker than that, but not toothpaste. Um, trying to think of what would be a good explanation for the... See, the thing is they'll dry, the, the water will evaporate even if you've got the cover closed. It's just very, very, you know, much more slowly. So I err on the side with these of probably more water. Now, if you're using gouache, no big deal if it dries out, right? You, you get in there, you add some water, and you reconstitute it. I have reconstituted gouache that dried into cakey little bits. Um, especially when we were moving. And so you can do that. It just takes a while. What I do then is I take my pipette and just put some water on that dried cake thing and let it, you know, let it sit there for a good bit, a day or an hour or whatever you've got. Um, the longer it sits, the less you'll have to stir to get it revived. So I'm just cleaning off my chopstick. Um, just needs a bit of water and it always looks so pretty when it's all clean and everything's stirred that it makes you want to paint. But these are kind of the fun relaxing activities to do you know when you maybe you're not feeling all that inspired but you know that you can do some art supply housekeeping so um, you know this is a great kind of housekeeping task that you can do you know when you have time or when you like I said maybe don't feel great don't feel that inspired that happens to all of us that's life and the more you you know play with your palette and and get to know how it works um, the more you'll probably use it because it's just really handy. So here is kind of a greeny gray color. Yeah, I was so, uh, when I got to my hotel and saw the muddy mess that this became, I thought, okay, 
cannot check the airtight palette. So that's how I go about filling the palette. And um, these colors are, like I said, some of the favorites that I like to start with when I'm, you know, making, mixing colors. And um, I guess I can tell you some of them so that if you're looking at them going, I want that. This is, no, is it that one? No, that's the lilac over here. Colbane has some amazing colors. I mean, so does Windsor Newton, so does Turner. Um, this is Smalt Blue. Look at that. Incredible color. And then this is my Permanent Yellow Deep Windsor Newton. It's a nice warm yellow. This one, this lemony yellow is the, let's see, it's called, there it is, primary yellow. So it's a, it's a um, lighter, what, what's often called like a lemon yellow. There's no orange in it. I'm trying not to, I'm trying to, you know, get as much paint off as I can. Actually, I should grab my sketchbook and show you how we make a background. Let's see here. Where's my red sketchbook? Oh, I'll just grab a piece of paper. I have my, I've been dividing up my sketchbooks into um, categories lately. And I think I'm going to keep one with abstracts and one with florals. So I'll just use this piece of black mixed media paper because it already has some marks from another YouTube video. All right, then this, what's next? Oh yeah, this blue, this is the Holbein Aqua Blue. It's really not turquoisey, but I mixed it with a teeny bit of green that was already in there, but it's a beautiful color. I can do that. And this green is the Winsor Newton Olive Green. I don't, uh, I shouldn't have bought all these greens. I've talked about that. Greens are, are best mixed, I think. Or, you know, so even if I start with a green, I mix them. Well, that kind of goes for all the colors. I mix them. But the um, olive green's a really nice warm green base to start with. But you can really save money by not buying greens and making yourself, or at least not buying more than one or two, and then making yourself um, create them with various blues, yellows, and then some sort of red or orange to uh, either to tone it down. And this is the Lilac by Holbein. And again, these are regular gouache, meaning that they can be reconstituted with water. Oops, I forgot I was doing this. Uh, okay, this is another color that I do buy, even though it's a green, because it's tricky to make. And I'm looking for it because it's Windsor Newton. Here it is. Linden green, but Turner makes a fresh green. This is the Aqua gouache, but let me get the regular gouache. They make a permanent yellow green. So the same concept. It's a, you can see here I'm washing my chopstick and stirring. But it's a beautiful, vibrant green that I'll mix and use as a highlight. So it's, a, you know, this way I'm not wasting paint, am I? This is a sepia just to use for mixing. It's a brown and it will warm up any other color. So just a teeny tiny bit sometimes. 
This is a Winsor Newton color called Naples Yellow. Yeah, just Naples Yellow. So really kind of mm, almost it. I would call it flesh, except that it's more yellow than flesh, less pink. A yellowy flesh, I guess. Oh, that one needs water. So see how pretty they look when they're freshly stirred? All right, I'm going to show you the rest of these colors and then go back to stirring so I don't bore you to tears. Oh, see so you now that. I got too excited stirring and splashed some of my <laughs> some of that into there, but that's okay. It'll it'll blend. It's not a big deal. All right. So let's do the colors and then I'll let you go. I've got, this is a pearl gold by Holbein, metallic gold, really nice. This is a flame red by Winsor Newton, a very warm orangey red. This is the essential opera pink or opera red. Um, the, all of the brands make an opera color. You just, you have to have one because they're just, it's just this almost fluorescent pink. This I think I mixed. This is pink, a pink and a white. This is the magenta, Quinacridone magenta by Winsor Newton. And then this is a Turner color that I love called Coral Red. I haven't found it in the other two brands. It may exist. Um, and then this is Marigold Yellow, which is really just a bright orange for Winsor Newton. And this is the Winsor Newton Primary Red. It comes in their basic primary set. So those are the colors. I've, I made this plum, by the way. It doesn't come in a tube. I made it with um, a maroon, a little bit of brown, and um, a little bit of blue and red, and just keep going until I get, get it the way I want it. All right, so have fun working on your palette. And I'll put the link to this palette in the description below.